the last few people leave Durdle Door. Good afternoon, I'm Tony Higginson and I'm photographing today down at Durdle Door in Dorset. And I must say, it's rather nice. This is one of the places uh, that I've been looking forward to photographing ever since I got into landscape photography. There's a big, well, I'll give you a, I'll give you a quick look of what we've got. For those of you who don't know, it's a large sea arch that's been, the centre of it's been knocked away over millennia by the sea to create this. However, we've come here in the afternoon in November and the sun is right behind the arch, so I can't photograph it. But I'm not in the slightest bit bothered if I'm honest because I've just been taking some photographs of what's called Bat's Head and Bat's Head was photographed by Andy Farrer a few years ago a couple of years ago it won Landscape Photography of the Year he photographed it with snow on the beach a lovely photograph and, uh, and so I've been photographing the same scene and it's gorgeous I love this kind of photography I'm going to show you now there so we've got the lovely cliffs got the cliffs up here and then we've got the sea swirling in and out of the photographs gorgeous this is really is my kind of seascape and what I've been doing is I've done some in landscape format but a lot of my work today I've done in portrait I've got the the cliffs have got this stunning light on them against the nice blue sky but when you use about a two second exposure one to two seconds you get the water moving in and out in the foreground creating these kind of beautiful streaks through the it's kind of like a, a pebble beach it's like a kind of fine fine stone it's lovely i'd like a bit of that for my driveway actually i could do with it about 20 ton if dorset council dorset council will drop that off in preston it'd be very nice and uh and really that's it there's not much to say about the technical side here I'm not doing anything particularly original I'm using a 0.6 soft graduated filter just to knock the sky down a little bit I'm using a polarizing filter again to just darken those blues down and make the water punch a little more and I've got a 0.6 uh, not a 0.6 sorry and I've got a six stop graduate uh, and I've got a six stop filter to allow me to get that shutter speed uh, about f11 it's giving me like i say around a second to two seconds and that's it it's great what i'm hoping is we get a really nice sunset if we get some lovely color in the sky there lighting up the cliffs with the water moving in and out now that's the kind of picture that i'm really looking for but if i don't get anything the pictures i've got are already fantastic so I just thought I'd let you see what I'm up to today. I know it's going to be a good picture. Oh, there is something I'll mention that's quite interesting. When you're shooting this kind of photograph with the waves crashing in, I was photographing similar in a similar place to where Chris is. In fact, in the exact same place. <laughs> that's the natural spot though. The reason that we both picked the same spot is because you're in the shadow of the arch but then you've got all the water and the sand lit by the sun, so it's the natural place to shoot. And uh, what was I saying? I've lost track. Oh yes, this is an important thing. If you're a beginner landscape photographer and you've not done a lot of seascapes, one of the things that can catch you out is sea spray. Now, if you're on the coast and it's waves are pounding in and you're getting covered with the spray, it's quite obvious that your filters are getting uh, misted up and you know full of full of salt water but somewhere like this it's quite hidden what forms on the front of your filters is a very fine mist of salt and you don't see it you don't you don't notice it you just keep shooting you notice it when you get home you look on the big screen and you go <gasps> oh no nothing sharp it's all got a blur to it the whole screen like a Gaussian blur over the whole image and it it's really frustrating I was with my friend Colin on the coast near Scarborough and I shot these wooden posts and I had the waves I spent about an hour doing it and I loved it and I got home 
all complete write off, couldn't process anything. So I'm very aware when I'm somewhere like this, every four to five minutes, have a look and give me front filter, which is the polarizer here, a little polish, just to make sure everything's clean and sharp because it, it kills you when you get home and you've gone to all this length and your pictures just are not quite right. So how I'm photographing this scene is I'm getting quite close to the water's edge so that I can get all this movement of the white foam coming in and out. It's, it's lovely. The sea's kind of a turquoise colour here. Really stunning. And I'm getting fairly into the action. I've got wellies on, so I'm quite happy to be down here in amongst it, you know. The waves are coming in. They're not too big, but, you know, this is where I want to be. I want to be down at this water's edge where I can my photographs are going to have impact you know i don't want them to be too far away i want when you look at the photo i want you to really get the feeling and the energy of the water so i'm photographing it using a 0.6 soft grad and a six stop filter and a circular polarizer it's kind of my standard setup that for seascapes i do a lot of my work with those sets of filters on and it just works really nice allowing that motion of the water as it's drifting in and out and who wouldn't want to be here? I mean, look at that. As the water breaks. And these waves are just perfect because they're just allowing, see those trails? So I'd press now. There, no, I went for a big one, press now. And then I get all that sliding back. And as, as the white foam slides back, that's when you get the picture with that really nice effect. So I'm going to crack on, see if I can get something different. And really, I'm just waiting for the sunset. So I hope you're having a good day wherever you are. Hope it's been as good as mine. I'll see you soon. Hello. Well, I'm back from my trip to Dorset. And this is one of the pictures I took down at Durdle Door. These are those lovely streaks that was talking about, you know, capturing that wave as it slides outwards. And I love the graphic nature of this headland too and some great clouds. So overall, a picture I'm happy with. I'll just do some quick camera correct, uh, lens corrections. I'll add a bit of saturation, a bit of vibrance. I'll just pull my shadows just a touch, a little bit of exposure, add some contrast. In fact, I'm gonna take the exposure back down and I'm gonna open that up into Photoshop. There. Now, oh, nice picture that. Quite happy with it. In terms of the proportions, I'm not sure it's quite right as a 6x4 this. This seems very long. And what I do is I'll take the crop tool. Oh, there it is. It's set to 8x10. And I'll just play around, getting the balance right because the sky is nice. I do want these streaks as well running through. So. I think that kind of works actually. Lovely. While I'm here, I'll use the straighten tool. That was a bit off that. So I've straightened that horizon now, which is good. Let's have a look. I'll just check it with the top of the screen. Yep, yeah, that's great. And I don't like these plane trails. I do not like them. They've got to go for me. Now the tool I would use again when I'm deleting this kind of object from an image is the healing brush tool. So it's not the spot healing, it's just the healing brush tool. And it means that I can select where I'm editing from rather than letting the computer take complete control. So I'm gonna select there I'm going to paint that piece out. I'm going to select from here, there. So it's Alt, left click here. That's my selected area. And then I'll paint that over there. And you're sort of just painting it out like I did in this one each pier video. You're just kind of working through the scene. And you get better at this. The more you do it, obviously, it's like anything. The more you do, the better you get. 
until it just becomes kind of automatic where to select from and you don't want to create patterns that are emerging that's one of the common mistakes is you do this sort of thing and you get repeated patterns and it looks it just looks unnatural the eye is drawn to repeated patterns because they don't tend to happen in nature nature tends to be random so repeated patterns always draw the eye so that's working quite nicely I've done a lot of cloning in my time so I'm fairly quick at it I didn't take that out of my last image but you know what I'm gonna take it out of this one just because it's annoying me see that didn't quite work see I set that the section higher than the original and it just didn't look right to me straight away there that's better there's a few people down on the beach they're not enough of a feature for me to think they deserve to stay you know they don't add anything they're just like a dot so they've got to go for me there was a little artist sitting painting is he in this one? Oh, he's not in this shot in some of the pictures i took there was a little artist just sat on the side near the rocks um, which was nice while I'm here, I may as well get rid of that bit of weed. It, it kind of does draw my eye a bit, that one. And some people would say this is going too far, doing all this kind of work on an image. And, and that's just personal choice. You know, it's up to you. None of that really works very well, if I'm honest. I just don't think that... Uh, <laughs> I don't think that was all very good, that little section that I did. Sometimes these tools just work a bit better than others. And it's about getting the right size of brush and the right hardness as well for the different area that you're trying to delete. It's that sort of oranginess that I'm not keen on there. There we go. Does that look a bit blotchy? Yeah, I think that's a bit blotchy that. And sometimes with sand, you have to use a harder edge. So you don't get that kind of blotchiness working its way in. See, I've ruined that there. It's just a mess. It doesn't look real. It doesn't look like the sand. So for me, I know this is a tutorial on how to use Photoshop, but the, the reality is that you do things sometimes and they just don't work. So. Having tried with the healing brush and it not really working, I'm going to switch to the clone stamp. So I'm going to set it fairly hard to normal at 100%. And that's doing a much better job there. Do you see how much more realistic that's looking? It's not blotching things out and making them look unrealistic. It's just reproducing Ah, that's far, far better. So it's just about getting the right tool for the right job. I suppose it's like anything in life. Now, what more can be done to that? There's not too much more to be done. What I will do is throw it back into camera raw. I'm wondering if it can take a little bit more saturation and I'll go into the individual colors and I'll pull down the luminance of the blue. See, it makes those clouds pop a little more. And it also adds this kind of shadow under this wave area, which I like. It adds a sort of a three-dimensionality to the wave, which is good. Lighten those turquoises a bit. And if I just pull the orange here, see, it's just making those cliffs pop. And the light was on those cliffs. It wasn't too strong, but they were popping a little bit, so... I like that effect. I didn't add any dehaze before. And for this kind of shot, I do like a little bit of dehaze. It just makes everything pop out. And that's nice. See what I've done there? It just it just sings a little bit more than it did. And now I'll go back into camera raw and do my black and white. 
So I'll turn it to grayscale. And this time what I'm looking at is these trails of water. I want to try and make these pop. So obviously they're lighter. Mm, if I pull the highlights, it's not doing much because they're not really highlights. So I'll have a go at adjusting this in curves by pulling those greys down a bit and lightening. So it's it's quite tricky. You gotta darken things down and I've gone quiet now because I'm thinking as I'm doing this. I can't do two things at once. There we go. So in that black and white version, I wasn't looking at the rest of the sky. See, that's all gone a bit bright and a bit contrasty. But I'm using this just for this area. So if I turn that now to my luminosity layer, see how it's added pop down here. I think it's gone a bit dark there. So I'll add a black mask. I'll take my brush back to a soft brush now let's say 35% and just paint a bit of that in a bit of what I've just done now do I like what's happened with it let's see <sighs> not really I think it's, it's brightened that water too much it's added a bit of pop to the bottom, a bit of a base down here, which I do like, but in general, not really. I didn't really like what it did. So another option is to use the dodge and burn tool. The burn obviously burns things uh, and makes things darker. The dodge tool lightens up. So I'll select the dodge. I'll. I can adjust highlights, midtones, or shadows. So I'll set it to high. Mm, are they highlights? Yeah, I'll set it to highlights. I'll set my exposure to nine percent. And I'll just paint like that across these streaks. See that last one was just way too much. Nine percent is quite strong on on the dodge tool. I'll go to three percent. It allows me a bit more. There. So that's added a bit more pop. Again, I'll add a mask because I don't like what it's done around here too much. It's gone a bit over the top on that water. It was mainly down on the sand I wanted to make it have an effect. And it's done that. Yeah, so I like that. I like what that's done. Maybe it's just a touch much at 100%. So I'll drop it to 75. And merge that down. And I'll compare back to my original. There we go. I think that's quite nice. Something a bit different. It's got the little C stack back there. There's a little C stack. I didn't actually get down to that far end of the beach. I wish I had really. <laughs> but that'll give me just a good excuse to go back. There's a little sea stack there and a little arch. Which would be nice to walk down to. But I was too busy with photography. So there, that's the finished edit. What I'm going to do is give you a link to the RAW file. That seems to be going down quite well when I did it last time. Uh, giving people a chance to repeat my processes on the actual, the original file that I'm working on and uh, and sort of learn from doing it. So, thanks for watching. That's a nice little picture. I hope you've enjoyed it, uh, and my little video. And this was just one of three that I took from Dirtle Door. So there's two more videos still to come, all with different pictures, obviously. Um, and uh, it's been great having you join me. And if you want to share this video, I'd really appreciate it. I'm trying to get my work out there. So if you could either share it on Facebook or Instagram, whatever you do. and uh, Or even if you're a member of a camera club and you can share it maybe into your camera club group. And 
let your friends have a go at editing this video and sort of following me on my journeys. I'd really appreciate that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.